In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with, with your spirit. In order to more worthily celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins and ask God for pardon and mercy. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have gravely sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. And I ask the Blessed Mary, Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, that we may celebrate with heartfelt devotion these days of joy, which we keep in honor of the risen Lord, and that what we relive in remembrance, we may always hold to in what we do. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Philip went down to the city of Samaria and proclaimed the Christ to them. With one accord, the crowds paid attention to what was said by Philip when they heard it and saw the signs he was doing. For unclean spirits, carrying out, crying out in a loud voice, came out of many possessed people, and many paralyzed or crippled people were cured. There was great joy in that city. Now when the apostles in Jerusalem heard that Samaria had accepted the word of God, they sent them Peter and John, who went down and prayed for them, that they might receive the Holy Spirit, for it had not yet fallen upon any of them. They had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then they laid hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Let all, Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Shout joyfully to God, all the earth. Sing praise to the glory of his name. Proclaim his glorious praise. Say to God, how tremendous are your deeds. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Let all on earth worship and sing praise to you. Sing praise to your name. Come and see the works of God his tremendous deeds among the children of Adam. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. He has changed the sea into dry land. Through the river they passed on foot. Therefore, let us rejoice in him. He rules by his might forever. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Hear now, all you who fear God, while I declare what he has done for me. Blessed be God, who refused me not, my prayer for his kindness. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. A 
A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, sanctify Christ as Lord in your hearts. Always be ready to give an explanation to anyone who asks of you for a reason for your hope, but do it with gentleness and reverence, keeping your conscience clear so that when you are mal maligned, those who defame your good conduct in Christ may themselves be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if that be the will of God, than for doing evil. For Christ also suffered for sins once, the righteous for the sake of the unrighteous, that he might lead you to God. Put to death in the flesh, he was brought to life in the spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. rejoice and be glad in it. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you always, the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot accept, because it neither sees nor knows him. But you know him, because he remains with you and will be in you. I will not leave you orphans, I will come to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me, because I live and you will live. On that day, you will realize that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I in you. Whoever has my commandments and observes them is the one who loves me. And whoever loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and reveal myself to him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I offer greetings to all those listening to our celebration of Holy Mass on the radio this morning and all those who will view this um, throughout the day on St. Genevieve TV. I'd like to greet all of our parishioners of St. Genevieve and St. Philip and James and all of our other churches in the county. I wish to take some time to talk about what it will look like when we, uh, when we return to Mass starting next Sunday. Now your individual parishes might have kind of different procedures, but I'm going to talk kind of the big scheme for here in St. Genevieve. And for our parishioners at St. Philip and James, we will finalize our plans Monday evening at a meeting. The Archbishop has uh, said that we are safe to resume the public celebration of Mass beginning tomorrow, May 18th. Here in St. Genevieve, we will have our first public Mass at the 8 a.m. daily Mass. 
we will return to our normal liturgical schedule of 8 a.m. daily masses, Monday through Friday. We will celebrate our weekend masses at the same time, Saturday evening at 5 p.m., Sunday morning at 6 a.m., 8.30 a.m., 10.30 a.m. We will hear confessions 30 minutes prior to each weekend mass. And for those who will be choosing not to come back to mass quite yet, we will still be offering confessions on Tuesday and Thursdays from 4 to 4.45. As a reminder, all Catholics are still dispensed from their Sunday obligation until further notice. Parishioners who are symptomatic, who have been exposed to another with the virus, should not come to church in accordance with national, state, and local health directives. Those coming to Mass should take their temperature at home before determining whether they should attend Mass. The Archdiocese has recommended to anyone over 60 years old and those with underlying health complications are encouraged to participate in Mass via radio, TV, or our live stream. If you choose to uh, participate remotely, Mass will still be broadcast on AM 980 at 8.30 AM and on St. Gen TV at 11 a.m. and 5 p.m. Our normal Sunday 10.30 Mass will now be the live streamed Mass. So, the question everyone has is what will Mass look like when we return? Thankfully we have a large church so we will not have to worry too much about restrictions of number of people in attendance over our Masses. However, we will practice the recommended social distancing precautions. Every other pew in church will be marked with a sign laying on the seat asking you not to sit there. This will be very important for something later. So every other seat, every other pew will be basically empty. We're asking that one family per pew, or if you're individual or couples sitting at either end of the pews, keeping that six feet distance to those sitting in the pews themselves. The Archdiocese has recommended that those coming to Mass wear a mask when entering and leaving church, but may remove the mask when in your pew. After every Mass, a team of volunteers will disinfect the pews, door handles, and other high traffic fixtures. Following Mass, we ask you to please exit practicing appropriate social distancing. We ask you not to remain in church so that we can, um, not to socialize in church, one, so that people that like to pray can pray in peace and quiet, but also two, so that we can get to work preparing for the next group coming into Mass. Bulletins and other materials the ushers would normally hand out will be available at tables at each door of the church in order to avoid person-to-person -person contact. The ushers will also not be taking up the collection using their baskets, but there will be baskets at every door. Myself, Deacon Jim, and the seminarians will greet everyone after Mass, but we will not be uh, shaking hands or any of that, at least for a while. Now, when we come back to Mass, it will look a little bit uh, different, but we have to realize that these phases of reopening are just that, phases. And as things continue to improve, more and more things will be introduced. The biggest change to us, which is happening not just in the Archdiocese, but all around the country, is that congregational singing is being discouraged. So we will wait for the return of our music ministry until the second phase of our opening. We know this will be strange. It'll be strange for you, just as saying Mass in an empty church has been strange for us. We've removed the hymnals and missalettes from the pews, but we will have the missalettes available at every door. You may feel free to take one, to use it, but take it home. Please do not leave it. That is yours to keep. The sign of peace will still be uh, suspended until further notice. We will not have an offertory procession, and Holy Communion will only be distributed under one species, meaning we will not be receiving from the chalice. Now, Holy Communion is going to be one of our challenges. So at Sunday Masses, for the reception of Holy Communion, the ministers of Holy Communion will be coming down and going up and down the empty aisles 
uh, the empty pews and distributing to people in their places. This avoids us having to have people going in two directions on the return aisles. Again, this is temporary and one of those things that can be lessened off um, as time goes on. If when we come to your pew you, wish to, you do not wish to receive communion, you only need to have a seat and that will indicate such. We will encourage those who are not comfortable receiving Holy Communion and especially those at home to continue to join us in a spiritual act of communion which will be led after communion at every Mass. At this time, myself, Deacon Jim, and the seminarians will be the ones distributing Holy Communion. We do this um, mainly for your health and wellness. Should something arise that we need an extraordinary minister, we will ask one before Mass and briefly explain the procedures for purification and, sanit and sanitizing. I ask that lectors and servers please follow your schedule as best as possible. Commentators will, though you won't need to announce hymns, should still welcome people to Mass, leave petitions in the absence of the deacon, read the responsorial psalm, and make the necessary announcements. All that I've just kind of condensed down for you, uh, parishioners will receive in the mail this week with a letter from myself explaining all these things. You also can find this on the parish Facebook page. Again, this will be strange, but I think the strangeness will be overcome by the joy of us being able to be back in our churches and being able to pray together, and especially to receive Holy Communion. So this has been a very strange couple of months, and I'm very thankful for everyone who's continued to keep up with worshiping remotely, those that have continued to make use of the sacrament of penance throughout the week, and especially those many people that come in all throughout the day to spend some time with our Lord in church and to light votive candles and offer prayers. Even though we've had to do this remotely, I certainly continue to feel the presence of everyone. So I look forward, as we celebrate the ascension of our Lord next Sunday, to see us all in the flesh once more. Together we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Confident in our Father's love and mercy, we offer to him now our needs and our prayers. For the Holy Father, all bishops in union with him, and the leadership of our church, that they may be faithful shepherds, bravely leading their people to holiness through fidelity to the Lord's teachings, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who long to complete their Christian initiation this Easter, that they will be reunited to us soon and celebrate with us in the fullness of the sacraments, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those suffering in the world, especially all those affected by the coronavirus, we pray for all healthcare workers and first responders that the Lord will keep them safe from harm and illness. 
We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our parish family, as we are se separated during this sacred Easter season, may we participate in these liturgies with hearts longing to be re reunited in prayer once more. We pray to the Lord. <clears throat> Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who are separated from their loved ones this Easter season, whether due to the essential nature of their work, military service, or keeping distance out of concern for health and safety, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For our beloved dead and all those who have recently gone to meet with the risen Lord, may they experience the joy of the resurrection. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all those personal prayers and intentions we hold in our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Good and gracious God, we, your children, entrust to you these our needs. Draw near to us now and answer these prayers which we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours might be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. May our prayers rise up to you, O Lord, together with the sacrificial offerings, so that purified by your graciousness, we may be conformed to the mysteries of your mighty love. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. <clears throat> it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to loud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. By the oblation of his body, he brought the sacrifices of old to fulfillment in the reality of the cross. And by commending himself to you for our salvation, he showed himself the priest, the altar, and the lamb of sacrifice. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers, with the angelic hosts, sing together the unending hymn of your glory 
as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. From the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Genevieve, with Saints Philip and James, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope and Robert our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. <clears throat> to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life. Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, to whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, Father who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy, thy will be done, on, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope 
and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For, For the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now, now and, forever. and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you, you take, take away, away the sins, sins of the world. world. Have, Have mercy on us. Lamb, Lamb of God, God you take, take away the sins of the world. world. Have, Have mercy on us. Lamb, Lamb of God, God you, take you take away the sins, sins of the world. world. Grant, Grant us peace. peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. An act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I am not able at this moment to receive you sacramentally, I ask that you spiritually enter into my heart. I embrace you and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who restore us to eternal life in the resurrection of Christ, increase in us, we pray, the fruits of this Paschal Sacrament and pour into our hearts the strength of this saving food through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. 
May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. St. Michael the Archangel, <clears throat> defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Hosts, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen.